Okay, good morning, good morning. This is Donovan Sadiq and Pastor Don from Reflections Church, Moreno Valley. And we are at our weekly devotional. And uh, please excuse me, I know I I sound really, really terrible, but I was uh, a little bit under the weather this weekend and I'm trying to recover. But again, uh, I would not miss a chance to listen to uh, Pastor Don's show and listen to what he has to say this week. So for all you guys, we've got less than 30 days till the election. We are over here at the Day Street Starbucks, right off Day Street, right off the t- uh, the 60 freeway. We're here from 10 to uh, 1045. If you want to come and have a coffee with us, Pastor Don, uh, you're always welcome to do that. The weather is great. You can't live in any other better place in the United States than Moreno Valley because we have snow in the mountains, 90 miles. You got another country 90 miles away. You got the beach 60 miles away, sometimes 45 if you're going to Newport. You cannot really ask for a better place to be and when I look around Moreno Valley other than when I see these ugly warehouses and I see how beautiful this city is you're in the desert and palm trees you can't ask for anything else and you know that's why I know uh, God is blessing us and he's going to continue to bless us so uh, Pastor Don it's another week thank you for coming how are you doing today I'm great Donovan thank you so much again I want to thank you for producing this podcast for me and promoting it on your hot seat I got to say to the audience one more time, you know, I can't tell you how much of a blessing that Donovan's been in this journey of my new church plant. I could have never had this type of exposure uh, with this church without this huge help uh, and efforts of Donovan Sadiq. So he's done everything he said. He's done even more than what he has said. So there's no question that this man lives by his motto, uh, deeds, not words. And folks, when he's saying he's under the weather, he's truly under the weather, but yet he's still is committed to helping me and he's still out here so again donovan thank you You're very very, very much very welcome so uh as, as we start this week uh pastor don what do you got for us it's your well Take you know what I, I don't know if you've realized this donovan you know we were kind of joking this morning um i don't know if you've realized that there's been so much more cussing lately <laughs> to, uh, that you hear in, in this world it seems like everyone everywhere i go there's swear words and people seem like they're not affected by it anymore it's just like kind of common language and I'm not talking about the mild ones, you know, the ones that you hear every every other day. I'm talking about the ones that make you blush 20 to 30 years ago. It seems like cussing has become part of our natural speech. And there's so much of it in the TV, cable shows, on movies. And now it almost seems strange when someone is not cussing about a certain topic, especially politics or even religion. But you know what, Donovan, I want to talk today about another type of bad word. A word, when applied in our lives, can have devastating effects on our Christian walk. And unfortunately, not one person in this world is immune to it. We all talk about it. We all feel it during many times of our lives. And it is a word that causes more damage to us than any of those cuss words that you may hear on movies and on TV. It's a four-letter word, and it's a dangerous one. This four-letter word is fear. You see, with this idea of fear, it doesn't mean, matter if you're a Christian or a non-Christian. We all struggle with fear in today's world. We live in a dendro- dangerous and chaotic place called Earth, and it seems to be getting worse and worse as the years go by. Sometimes our lives remind me of the African impala, a beautiful animal that can jump up a height of over 10 feet and leap a distance over 30 feet. Yet these amazing creatures can be kept in an enclosure of a zoo with only a three-foot wall with no threat that they would ever jump over it. You see, these impalas will not jump if they can't see where their feet will fall. Faith is the ability to trust in what we cannot see. But how many of us are like these impalas who will not leap to your full potential or you will not take that chance of God's calling because you are entrapped in your life by fear. You and I have so much ability, so much love, and so much treasures, but so many of us are limiting ourselves because of this four-letter word called fear. So what do we do to get rid of this fear? We need to replace fear with faith. And how do we do that? Well, the answer, like always, is in God's word. This morning, I want to read three beautiful verses from uh, Psalm 27. Now, David wrote this psalm when he was running from his life 
from Saul. Saul was trying to kill him because he was jealous that David was going to be the next king. So David, at this point, did not know if he would even survive the day. So let's see what David says in this psalm. Psalm 27, verses 1 to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advanced against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besieges me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. Now our fear may not be from an army coming after us, trying to kill us, like in the case of David. But we may have fear and not have enough money to pay our bills. Or we may have fear for our children. We may have fear of losing our job. Or just have fear of the world itself. Or we also may have fear of wanting to get involved with a new church plant in our city because we don't know what to expect. Many people have fear of the dark. Why? Because they can't see what they're, where they're going. They can't see the unknown because of the darkness. It is the unknown of what we can't see that scares us. Well, folks, life can be the same way. When we are unsure or not confident, there is fear. You know, there's this, there's this really cute story of a young boy who grew up in the hills of Southern California. His family had gotten up real early to take a trip to Grandma's house. As they were driving along for about an hour, a very thick fog rested over the area. You could literally not see one thing. The young boy, he was terrified. He was so scared that they would not make it out of the mountain. But his mother assured him by saying, Don't worry, son. Your father knows the way. You see, this young boy's dad, he lived in these hills since he was a child. And for years he had driven this road through the fog to get to work every day. He was comfortable in driving in thick fog. What an awesome lesson for you and I. How often when we can't see the light of the road of life do we panic and be full of fear only to have God whisper in our ears saying, Don't worry. Your Father knows the way. God is our light. Folks, we must never forget that God is our light. It is God that leads us, leads us out of the fear of darkness, of the unknown, and into His light. I am asking you to take a huge leap of faith and be part of a church plant in Rancho Bolago. And you may be feeling fear, or you may be feeling apprehension, because you don't know what that means. You don't know what you will need to do. You don't have any clue what the future holds. And of course, you don't know me personally, except from my devotionals and these weekly podcasts. With all these unknowns, fear will naturally set in most people. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. But the key is to make fear only a visitor and not a permanent residence in your mind and heart. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Fear always starts in our minds. So our first response must be to replace fear with thoughts of God. Your mind is a powerful tool. Every word you speak, every action you take, and every motion you feel starts in the mind. When your mind is full of fear, it is like walking through a dark alley really late at night, all alone with no protection. You would walk very slow, very timid, with no confidence, with your head down and your body shaking. This is what fear in the mind from the world does to us. It paralyzes you, makes you completely ineffective. But if you were walking down that same dark alley and you had eight secret servicemen, four on each side with automatic weapons, completely grounding you, then how would you walk through that alley? You would walk fairly fast with your head up, tons of confidence, daring anyone to confront you. Well, folks, that's what, the, that's what those thoughts of God does for us. It gives us confidence in knowing that with God leading us, there is no fear and you are never alone. Romans 8.31 says it best. That verse says, "When What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, 
who can be against us. Remember, it all starts in our minds. Lastly, I want to give you two verses that are two of my favorite verses in the New Testament. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and, and your minds in Christ Jesus. Folks, I am praying that you fill your mind with Christ and God's promises in the Bible. Take the fear out of your mind and fill it with God's Word. So when it comes to this wonderful church plant opportunity in Rancho Bolago, don't let fear take you away from the potential blessings of being part of an amazing adventure from God. Please make your plans to be at our Meet Pastor Don on October 29th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Vista Lomas Park in Rancho Bolago. There have been flyers pretty much all over Facebook, and we will continue to post these flyers all the way up to the event. But if you have any questions, comments, or anything about it, you can IM me anytime. My full name is Don Meinberg, M-E-I-N-B-E-R-G. Or you can reply to my Reflections Marino Valley Church Facebook page. Or you can email me at Reflections Christian Fellowship at gmail.com. And of course, you know, I would love to hear from you at any time. Folks, it is really important that you and your family join us at this event and see what it is all about. It can truly change your life, build up your faith, not only for you, but your entire family. So thank you so much for listening to me today, and may God richly bless you and your family. Okay, there it is. There it is. Thank you again, Pastor Don, for your weekly devotional. I think that is something that is needed in this city. It's needed in this world because people are under siege. Can I ask you a a worldly question? The question is, did you see the debates? I did see a portion of the debates. Yes, I did. Um, Now, as a godly man... um, they're saying historically these are the worst two candidates ever to run for the presidency. Uh, could you give us your just your godly take or your you know man of God's take on these two um, <laughs> candidates? I mean, we know you know you're you're not you know, but what I'm saying is what where I'm trying to go with this is these are people running to represent and lead the United States. Well, you know, I'm. Unfortunately, yeah. One of the things you said, Donovan, I agree with. I'm not a political guy. I don't really endorse either one of these guys. Unfortunately, the two candidates we have to choose from, um, I'm I'm not really excited about either one of them, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I the, the type of president I I always look for is one that I know that would have uh, my family my family's best interest that will protect us not only in our streets but also will protect our country. One that really puts the, um, the, the lives of, of the people more importantly than any fundraising or monies that they may receive uh, from this campaign. Uh, jobs are so important. I, I, in, my, in my talking to so many people here in Moreno Valley and Paris, people are such struggling in so many ways. So I, I am more leaning towards a candidate that truly cares about the people, uh, truly cares about their plight, having jobs, being safe, you know, um, you know, being very, very cognizant of what's going on in, in, in foreign policy, in the Middle East, in Syria, Aleppo, Iraq, I mean, those things that are really threatening our world. Uh, I really can't tell you if I have a can of two indoors. I, I don't, I, unfortunately, I thought the debate was uh, discouraging. I really did. I, I am not into the negative uh, bashing. You know, you know the sex tapes, I guess, yeah. from Donald mm-hmm. Trump, and then the sex capades of Mr. Clinton. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the, you know, those things just cloud what we really what we need to do exactly. To do. And, and those things to me are just a, a waste of time. Now, now locally, apply that locally. Now, because uh, that's where I was kind of leading it. Where you got leaders. This is the example of leaders that we have on a national level. Now, here we are at the very first step of a political um, a career. You're running for city council. Yeah. Um, we've got candidates out there running for mayor. Running, I'm running for city council. You know, um, and this is the kind of thing that I think is a uh, problem 
in the political realm is that we have candidates, like you said in your last uh, devotional, as you said last week, uh, that they or no, you said at the, uh, I'm sorry, at the debate, Edgemont debate, you know, these people are not serving the people, they're serving themselves. And uh, I mean, you see it on the national level as well. So um, I, all I could do is ask for you to pray. pray. And everybody out there listening, please pray for this country. Uh, I'm not a political, I, you know, I'm voting. I'm not voting uh, Hillary. Definitely not voting Hillary. I'm not voting Trump, but I'm voting. So uh, there's, there's got to be another option out there. And, I, I, and I'm going to tell you, if God was on the ballot, that's where I would be voting. So. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's very true. Let me just say one thing about um, uh, in regards to voting, who, you, who, who the best candidate to vote for. You know, I'm, I'm not here to tell anybody who to vote for. But the one thing that you always need to remember is that in any type of election, character counts character integrity and making sure that the heart of the individual is always going to be for your best interest and not their own best interest and I think that's the most important thing if someone says they're going to do something I think it is critical that they do it if someone says they're going to support you I think it's really important that they that they actually accomplish what they say they're going to do someone that really is honest and tells it like it is. I mean, those are the type of people that you, I would want having my back and my family's back, you know, going forward here in Moreno Valley. So, again, character, integrity uh, is the things that matters. I look for in regards to people that I would want in office. Right. Now, I have a, another question for you real quick. I have been praying, and, I'm, and this is a question that was uh, emailed to me uh, earlier in the week. And somebody emailed me and they said, well, they've been praying on this job because said everybody's hurting for jobs. They're hurting to live, you know, uh, struggling to thing. You know, the churches are doing everything they can. I mean, public, I mean, just the greed, corporate greed is just, it just doesn't make any sense. But this person was praying for a job and they didn't get the job and now they're discouraged. What would you tell that person in regards to, you know, she's like, oh, well, if I pray to God, because a lot of preachers say, well, you pray and uh, sow a seed of faith. And what what happens then when it doesn't, you know, I, what I told her basically was, well, that wasn't the job. Yeah. Well, you know, then that's actually not a bad answer. You know, um, you know, a lot of times in my life, I have prayed to God to give me something that I think I needed. You know, during that 2007 and 8 recession, when I had my business uh, was booming, and then in those two years, it absolutely went in the tank. I prayed and prayed every day to God saying, Lord, will you please help my business, help resurrect my business. Lord, I'm losing everything. And you know what? The answer that, God's, that, the answer that God had for my prayer was no. He said, no, I have something better for you. And it said from that point to the point I am today that God brought me into the ministry, started a church in Paris, and praying that I'm starting a new church here in Moreno Valley. So to that person who didn't get that job, I would say, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Because yeah. God has okay. a job for you, and that job that He has for you is probably so much better than the job that you may have thought was best for yourself. You know, God is, God's is god got your back. He carries you through those storms of no work, no money. He's carrying you, and He's got the perfect job for you that will be a blessing for your family. So don't be discouraged. Keep praying. Stay faithful, and allow God to lead you. Amen. Amen. Stay faithful. Stay praying. Stay consistent. You know, you just can't pray on a Thursday. Go to the club on Saturday. Do what you do. Then expect God to uh, be there. I mean, uh, we serve a uh, a a selfish God. Exactly. I mean, He's very very selfish. So you know, you you've, you've got to do your part so He can do His part. Correct. Well, I I say the word jealous. He's a jealous, jealous God. God. He, God does not want you to look towards the world and look to other idols. He wants us all to look towards Him to lead us in, in everything we do. See, and, and that's exactly uh, the advice. I'm glad you're here. Like I said, I, I get these emails because, you know, people get discouraged out there because they're trying to make it. They're trying to live. And also, you got, you got to ask yourself, the, the young lady that, that gave me that uh, question, you got to ask yourself this. And I'm not an expert. I, I'm just a regular person just like you. And I don't have all the answers. That's why I bring guys like Pastor Don on to help us uh, answer these questions. One thing I do know is you have to be consistent. You know, you, 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 you can't be living a certain lifestyle and then expect God to do a certain thing. You have to do, uh, God has, to, what's that when he did Moses? You just use the example of Moses. Here's a guy who was an Egyptian. You know, he looked Egyptian, obviously, if he was Pharaoh's grandson and all that other stuff. But God, uh, when God went to him and said, hey, go lead my people. First thing he said was, no, I'm not the guy. Don't, you know, don't come over here. 
but sent him in the desert for 40 days or wherever it was and melted him and made him ready mm -hmm. and strong. And that's what I, I, I would recommend to anybody who's out there and you're going to get discouraged. And you are. But that isn't the job for you then. God is preparing that plan for you and wants you to be ready when that job does come. Because, you know, if you want to work over here, or you want to work over there, that isn't what God wants you to do. And you've got to pray on it every day and be consistent. You cannot... I had so many friends when the uh, housing thing was uh, jamming. They worked at Taco Bell and they got a three hundred thousand dollar house. I'm right. thinking, and, the, and then when the and, and then they go to church and they're like, "Oh, the Lord just oh, the Lord has blessed me. It's so good." Four months later, oh my God, I don't know why God has done this to me. Oh my God, this this house is a hell hell hole. And then I would ask them, "Well, that isn't God." Because yeah. if you looked on their application, they lied on their application. So what I'm trying to tell a lot of people out there is, I don't believe, Donovan does not believe God operates in a negative way. God's already put out the plan. You do it this way. Boom, boom. Do what is righteous. Boom, boom, boom. If you're doing it righteously, he's going to look out for you. But to expect God to step in, you did something that was totally against his l rules and his law and, and you know honor and all that other stuff I don't think it's going to happen yeah let me just add a couple things to that sure. I I do agree with that um, you know the idea of uh, waiting on God's timing frustrates a lot of people because they we're in, a, we're in a microwave type society we want everything yesterday we need it today 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 we kind of treat God like a vending machine right. expecting we put it we, we, we put in a prayer to expect uh, results back but we need to realize that um you know, trusting God is a leap of faith. Trusting God's timing is a leap of faith. Everything we do when we allow the Lord to do it with for us is a leap of faith. So to that young lady that's struggling trying to find that job, uh, realize that God's timing is perfect. You may have gotten that job that you thought you wanted and may have the absolute worst boss, worst hours, can be with your family. There's could have been circumstances that God knew already in advance that was not going to be a blessing for you, so we had something else lined up in the future. So I never want anybody to be discouraged in regards to things in life. But what Donovan is really true, we need to stay faithful. We need to be consistent. We need to keep trusting God because God is the answer. We just not, the problem that we do with God is we pray and then we play tug of war with God. We exactly. give it to God and then we take it back exactly. and it's not done quick enough. Well, that's not faith. Faith is when you give it to God, you allow God to do it and lead. And uh, that's what I pray for anyone who is struggling out there. And let the church be part of that blessing. Yes. You know, I've been blessed, and this is not bragging because this is all from the Lord, but I've been blessed to be able to help many people find jobs, you know, just through connections, my business background. And that's not because of anything I did. It's because of what God opened God. up for me to help others. So, you know, God's got those jobs. God's got that... Uh, those uh, uh, things that is needed out there for those of you that are struggling. We just need to have faith. Amen. Okay, uh, again, we have the uh, Meet Pastor Don uh, uh, event coming up on the 29th, correct? October 29th from 11 to 3. 11 to 1, excuse me, at Vista Lomas Park in Rancho Bellagio. And guess what? We are going to be there. We're going to be on the radio. We're going to go live. So if you want to come down, we're going to have uh, Pastor Don sit down and with us and ask some uh, answer some questions and just you know get it out there and like i said i i love talking to this guy i'm not a religious person i'm not a godly man like this man is and a lot a lot of pastors are that have a better insight of it i'm just a regular person like everybody else but i love talking the bible i love talking about god because if it wasn't for god i would not be here today as a former military person dealing with what the military deals with every day so i thank god every day that I wake up and I can pet my dog and I can, uh, you know, kick my cat, and, you know, things, you know, and everybody knows that. So uh, Pastor Don is a blessing. Please, I'm going to be out there. You're all welcome to come out. Come out. We're out here every Tuesday, 10 to 1045. Come and have a coffee with us and ask Pastor Don these questions. And I'm going to tell you, like Peter, I've never been a part of a, a church build from the beginning. I've always gone to, you know, being a Catholic 2,000 years old, whatever. I go to my grandmother's churches. They're already built. And I want to just see what it would be like to help build a church and say, I did that or I helped incarnate that. And if that church lasts 100, 200 years, and we have some historic churches in the uh, Inland Empire, if that church lasts 200 years and I'm long gone, 
and my name is somewhere on there. Not that I'm into all that, but you know, you, you have a legacy left over. I want to be a part of that. And that's why uh, I'm definitely going to do everything that I can. 30 uh, days till the election is over. Once that election is over, and you, you guys want to hear something funny? Pastor Don, is he's, he's, he's praying that I'm going to lose. <laughs> he's praying that I'm going to well. lose because, because he feels that I'm better served doing what I do and serving the Lord. Well, let me, let me say one thing about that. You know, <laughs> yeah, what, he's right. I, I'm praying for him to lose because I think that he has so much more positive effect in what he's doing here in the hot seat. But I'm going to be honest with you. You couldn't find a better candidate for District 1 than, than Donovan Sadiq. But, you know, from the standpoint of his effectiveness throughout the entire city, through church plants and other things that he's t wanting to do, he would have an amazing amount of, um, you know, uh, uh, abilities to do that through his radio show. But, no, Donovan, I, I still want yeah. you to win because yes, I think yeah. you'd be best right. for the city. But, again, you would have a lot of effect if you did not have him to win. Right. Now, you got to remember, though, also to Pastor Don, um, I serve God first before I serve man. It's like you said in, in, in your message. God family, community. And that's what it's about. Exactly. So thank you, Pastor Don. Again, uh, we are at, this is the hot seat, Donovan Sadiq and Pastor Don, weekly devotional. You can catch it out on YouTube. These uh, are all archived. So if you're feeling bad and you want to hear some uh, inspiration, please go to a Pastor Don Reflections YouTube uh, channel and you can get the devotionals over there. And if you have any questions, please email me, email Pastor Don. We're on the same team and I'm going that I can to make sure that this church plant is planted. And so we'll see you guys again next week. We thank you guys so much for listening. This has been the Hot Seat Radio Show.